Hello friends, my name is Brad Beard, owner and winemaker for Mercury Wine, located in downtown Geyserville, California. Welcome to Pairings with Brad, where I pair up uh, some family favorites, some other good eats, even some traditional uh, classic wine and food pairings to see which one pairs best with them. Today we're going to be doing my Chile Verde recipe. It's got a little keto twist. We just swap out some cauliflower uh, for potatoes. Otherwise, it's a pretty keto um, dish altogether. Tons of vegetables and a little bit of pork. It is Chile Verde, uh, basically a green chili stew. It's absolutely fantastic and um, because it's a little bit of a larger uh, recipe or at least took a little bit more prep time is going to take a little bit longer to cook. We're just going to do one recipe and the reason why I chose this recipe is because it goes absolutely fantastic with white wine and red wine. So you'll get a twofer with the uh, wine tastings as well. Uh, the wine I'm drinking uh, today right now uh, is my Axina, my super summery refreshing um, Gosh, just summer in a glass with uh, peaches, pears, pineapple, even a little bit of um, lemon zest on the finish. Uh, absolutely delicious. I'm also going to deglaze the pan with it as well, so it's going to add all those great flavors in there too. And then my red wine is my 2017 Sonoma County uh, Zinfandel. But let's go ahead and get started um, with all of our vegetables. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop up a bunch of vegetables. The nice part about this is that you don't have to, you know, fine chop, dice, or julienne. This is going to just be a larger or a rough chop uh, because we're going to end up blending it anyway and the blender is going to do all of the work uh, for us. So let's go ahead and get started and do some rough chopping on, um, on all of our goodies here. So I'm going to start with uh, a tomatillo. A tomatillo is in the tomato family or in the nightshade family, but it has this... Um, interesting little husk on the outside of it um, and they're actually kind of sticky and sometimes there's some little schmutz in there but you have this nice little uh, protective coating you just go ahead and uh, peel that back as best you can all right this one seems to be stuck on more than others and if you've never worked with a tomatillo before uh, once you peel back this little paper uh, skin on the outside peel it back pull the top get the stem Makes it real easy there, uh, but it uh, looks like a tomato, just happens to be green, uh, and it is a little sticky, so I do recommend just giving it a rinse once you've, um, once you've got ahead and got that skin off there. There we go, all polished up, all the sticky is gone, and it has a really fresh green uh, flavor to it. So this is a pretty decent size one. Sometimes they're about half the size. The ones I ended up were a little of both. I don't think it really matters. Tomatillos aren't supposed to be soft, but not rock hard either. So this one just has a, just a fair amount of give. And since it's just a rough chop, we're just gonna go in halves with this guy, then quarters. Super simple. Put it in there, the rest of them. Um, this is our poblano pepper that we're going to be using today. Uh, this recipe calls for about four, five, six of them. Ends up being, whoops, outside we got mosquitoes coming. Uh, ends up being uh, about a pound and a half of the tomatillos. And then, so, excuse me, not the tomatillos, but the uh, poblanos. And then uh, the way you cut those guys open, you want to get this little seed packet out. And so it's nice, you can just reach in there and uh, pull out the seed packet. It's not as fibrous on the inside as like a uh, bell pepper or something like that. So all you gotta do is get that top uh, going. Always give a nice wash. There does seem to be some dirt that collects up in here. And then uh, just uh, chop around the stem. We don't wanna waste anything. There we go. And like I was saying, a rough chop will just come down two, maybe three times there. And then once uh, across, making it real simple. For us, the onion rough chop as well. So that was just a half an onion. Um, you know, basically turned it into six. Whoa, almost uh, mixed it up with the wrong stuff there. And uh, the garlic, we don't have to worry about mincing or chopping because it's just going to go into the uh, blender as well. And uh, you can use jalapenos for this. Uh, we ended up using, uh, this will end up being six of the... Um, of the serrano pepper, six of the serranos. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get the seeds out, and the seeds are where most of the heat is. So if you're worried about a little heat, I would uh, focus on getting these guys uh, chopped out. I usually just take the top off. Uh, with a jalapeno, you can just slide down the sides, but these little guys, since they usually have a curve to them, I just cut down the middle and then drag, drag the uh, knife down so you got it nice and clean. 
get rid of that. There we go. There we go, we got our Serranos. And uh, next, what's nice about this is it's going in the blender. I just go ahead and chop the top off of my cilantro. And we're gonna separate that because I'm probably gonna have to do two uh, blenders full to get all this in. All right. So real simple, I've got a pretty good size blender here. Uh, so if yours is a little smaller, you might need to do three batches or uh, three uh, blenders full. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we'll go ahead and start with throwing some of our tomatillos in here. This looks like, uh, it ended up being like 14, 15. They were all different sizes. I think it was just around uh, two pounds, maybe uh, two and a quarter pounds. We'll get started by throwing some of those guys in, taking about half, throw in our half of our poblanos. There we go, uh, half of our serranos. Oh my goodness, I might have to make three batches today. Looks like I've got a little more. I've got uh, two, um, two uh, large onions, throw in a couple of these. All right, this is our uh, chicken stock. I always like to say get that Nor roasted chicken stock. The roasted chicken stock just adds a little more flavor. This is a couple of uh, quarts. Uh, we'll use this uh, to help blend. And we'll go ahead and reserve some of this so that we make sure we have enough liquid to cover the uh, pork once it starts braising. Hi <laughs> Fred, lots of good stuff up here, huh? Oh, maybe even a little bit of lime juice, that would be good. All right. So we'll get that down tight. Always hold the top, you don't want it to blow off. Just pulse it a few times. I know, Fred, it's loud, I'm sorry, here we go. Looking good there. All right, now that I've got that condensed, I can throw in my cilantro and I can put in a little bit more onion. Uh, maybe a few more of those guys. A little splash here. And hit it with some lime juice. There we go. Now we can go ahead and uh, pure, uh, puree this to a, uh, to a nice smooth. Probably can't hear me now. <laughs> there we go. We'll let this baby run for just a second. I'll be right back with you. Okay, my friends, we're back. Um, I've got it all blended up. As you can see, I've got my uh, braising liquid all blended up, ready to go. It's absolutely a gorgeous color, uh, but that's not gonna last long. Once it actually heats up, it's gonna get a little more olive green instead of this beautiful uh, bright green. A couple of things I, I wanted to mention when I was uh, chopping everything up and getting everything in the blender, I did reserve a little bit of the um, cilantro uh, because we're gonna use that as a garnish, and I reserved half an onion uh, to chop up uh, for the garnish as well. Uh, we also garnish with a little bit of sour cream or your favorite salsa, but I let you decide uh, what garnishes uh, you like. And so we're on to the meat. So this is a pork recipe and we're going to be using pork butt, pork shoulder. It's the exact same thing. Um, and what I do because I make this dish a lot and, um, and I also like making carnitas and a lot of other things, I go ahead and buy the whole uh, pork butt, but I do get the uh, shoulder blade uh, removed for me uh, just because uh, I'm not a butcher and it's hard for me to work around that. So I, I do get a full pork butt and that gives me a lot of extra meat that I can uh, pre-chop up and freeze. So next time I want to do this meal, it's ready to go as well. Uh, and most people will say there's no need to uh, trim it. There's a lot of fat on a pork butt. I don't mind a little fat in my dishes, but for me personally, uh, I go ahead and trim it up. So we've got some pieces that are as lean as this, and then some of the pieces have a little bit of uh, residual fat laying on the side, like that one might be a little extra fatty. You do need some fat for the dish, but it's pretty nicely marbled, and by the time you finish uh, braising this, it's gonna be um, fork tender anyway, and so you really don't need a lot of extra uh, fat for the dish. So now all we need to do is um, get these things seasoned up and then we're gonna uh, get them in the pan to get a little browning action on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the pan on right now. There we go. 
since I stole most of the fat off the off the sides, we'll go ahead and put a little uh, avocado oil in here, olive oil. Doesn't need to be extra virgin or any of your fancy stuff like that. It just needs to be a quality oil that's not going to burn. And then um, this is about two and a half pounds of uh, pork butt after I've trimmed it. So I would expect you'd throw away at least a quarter pound uh, from trimming. And uh, this is going to be a little bit too much for the pan initially to get a good brown. So we're going to have to do it in two batches uh, to get it going. But Let's uh, get it seasoned. All right, get the wine out of the way. Uh, here we go. And we're gonna use uh, about two tablespoons, a tablespoon and a half of kosher salt. And then I like to do it twice since it's in this bowl and you gotta mix it up. Uh, we're gonna put in half the seasonings, give it a mix, then put the other half the seasonings in there. So we'll get the first uh, teaspoon in there. I do like a little bit of chipotle. So this is a half of a, uh, tea of a teaspoon. But of course, just putting a quarter in uh, right now. Cayenne, I, I like cayenne, so it's absolutely gonna get a full teaspoon in there. Uh, cumin, absolutely need the cumin for a teaspoon or so. You really can't go wrong with this dish because all those wonderful green flavors from all those fantastic vegetables that we put in, um, it really uh, goes nicely with. And then a little bit of uh, garlic powder. I know we already put a lot of clove in there, but the meat itself I think needs to be seasoned with some uh, good stuff as well. There we go. And then just a little bit of uh, onion powder or granulated onion, whichever way. There we go. And as you can see, so I've got a nice coating, but it's really not over everything. So we'll go ahead and give these guys a nice toss and then we'll do it again to get the rest of those on there. You really wanna get it coated nicely because when we're searing this, um, what it's gonna do is sear in all those wonderful flavors. So you do want it um, flavored on all sides. All right, here we go again. The Chipotle just mainly for some smoky flavors. Cayenne obviously for the heat. Cumin for the good traditional flavors. And oh my gosh, I gotta tell you, when I was blending this stuff up, my onions were so crazy, I was crying. It was unbelievable. So many great onion flavors in there. Okay, can't forget the salt. There we go, this is just a nice kosher. We're gonna give this one more toss and you can see now we've got a nice coat on here. Oh my gosh, and I almost forgot to add in pepper, uh, some nice freshly ground pepper, of course. Probably about a teaspoon or so of that as well, if I can get it into the bowl. <laughs> Instead of throwing it all over. There we go. One more time. All right, uh, the, the pan should be nicely warmed by now. Let's see. Oh, might have to test it. Here we go, let's see. Oh, I think I could turn that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so like I was saying, you just don't want to crowd the pan, but you want to get a nice, get a nice sear. Maybe two more pieces. We just salted it, so the salt's really not gonna be bringing out a lot at this exact moment. All right, give me just a couple of minutes. We'll get this all browned up. All right, my friends, we are back. We have got uh, some crispification going on here. Nice and, oh my gosh, look at that. Just nice uh, crispy action on the outside there. This is where all the roasty flavors come and you don't have to roast the vegetables to get those roasty flavors because they're all right now uh, in the pan. Uh, now, the best part, we take a little like Xena or a little Savion Blanc or a drinkable white wine and we go ahead and pour it in. Be careful because what this is going to do is start deglazing the pan because you want all those crispy bits off the bottom. That's where all the flavor's at. And then before, we'll go ahead and turn this down. Before we, uh, you know, end up making a small roux out of that, I think I'm going to get a little more chicken stock in there. There we go. So we can get the last... There we go, simmer down. 
Literally, so we can get those last little bits and we do want to simmer off the alcohol. There's no need to have it in there. Probably would uh, bake away anyway, but we'll get that going. Excellent. All the rest of our meat that we've got uh, that we already pre uh, sauteed, it's gonna go in. Don't forget about your accumulated juices. That's all sorts of good stuff in there. We've already got a nice little boil going on the chicken stock. And now for the best part, you can see after we whipped it up, it actually is pretty thick and separated a little bit. So we're gonna wanna stir this in. And we've got that chicken stock in there already, right? There we go. Because the most important part to this once you've got it all together is that all your meat's covered because once you uh, stick it in the oven on 275 for two and a half to three hours, you don't want that meat to be uncovered and get, um, and get dried out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bring this back up to a boil. And then once we're done getting this to a boil, we're gonna stick it, we're gonna get the uh, cover on there. We're gonna roll it up. You know what I'm looking in here? It's a little bit thick. So I'm just going to use a little more chicken stock uh, because it's going to have uh, plenty of hours to uh, stew down. There we go. Oh, that's looking fantastic. Can you get a little close up for me? So just nice, you know, not too thick, nice flavors. Oh, it's going to be coming together just nice. All right, guys, so what's going to happen now? We'll get that into the oven. I'm going to have a couple more glasses of wine, and if I was having a dinner party, uh, I'd be, uh, you know, setting the tables, getting those things ready. And, of course, my cauliflower is still sitting over here. What we're going to do is about an hour away. So we're going to check this in an hour and a half. If it's going long like I think it should, at the two-hour mark, I'm going to toss the cauliflower in so that it can uh, tenderize, but you don't want it to fall apart, so I don't want to put it in there for the whole uh, two and a half to three hours. All right, guys, we'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, my friends, we are back with Freddy. He says it smells really good out here. I decided not to put it in the oven. It's just been simmering on the, uh, the stovetop uh, for the last hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes or so, just at a very nice low simmer. Um, I don't know if you can see, we've got this beautiful dark green olive uh, color. Everything's looking very nice. Let me pull out some of the meat here, looking good. All right, there's still some resistance into the uh, meat, uh, but at an hour and a half, it's feeling really good. Uh, so I'm pretty confident now that it'll be done at least within the hour. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my cauliflower in there. So this is uh, two pounds of cauliflower. I've got it chopped into one, one and a half inch cubes. When you chop cauliflower, you know what happens? It breaks into smaller pieces. It's just gonna happen. You usually wanna try to get consistent size pieces, but with cauliflower, you can't. So I've got to accommodate for the fact that a larger piece like this is going to take about an hour to become tender. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the cauliflower in. Gently, you don't want too much splashing going on. All right, looking fantastic. And you want to make sure that the cauliflower ends up being submerged so that it cooks properly as well. And it looks like we still have enough liquid. If I didn't have enough liquid for the cauliflower, I would pour some more chicken stock in. But things are looking fantastic. I cannot wait for supper time tonight. We're gonna have, it's gonna be fantastic. So, all right, we will see you in about another hour. Thank you. Okay, my friends, we're back. It's been a little bit over three hours. This has been uh, simmering away. It's really coming together so nicely. I just wish you could smell it even with the lid on. It smells so good. Um, I threw an extra wine into the mix just because I thought the Savion Blanc might be really nice with it as well. We're gonna find out here shortly. So let's see how we're doing here. All right, looking very nice. We'll give it a little bit of a stir. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, the cauliflower is looking fantastic. But I just wanna make sure that this is what I did just, just a couple seconds ago. You pull out a little piece of meat, you get it on the spoon. How does the fork go in? Almost zero resistance, but it didn't fall apart. So that's what you're looking for. Falling apart, nothing's wrong with it. It's gonna be fine, but you just wanna have a little resistance so you have something to chew. That looks great. All right, that's nice. 
So we'll go ahead and plate up. Uh, we have a little bit of onion chopped up. We have a little sour cream. We've got a little bit of cilantro and just a little bit of uh, shredded jack and cheddar cheese. So we'll get my bowl. Oh my goodness, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Holy smokes. This is delicious, and it's getting late here, so we are very hungry. <laughs> That's looking great. All right, here we go. Just a little onion spread around to make it look nice. I always put my little daub of sour cream off the side. That way, uh, you can go ahead and dig into it when you want to, so it's not in every single bite. A little bit of that cilantro that we had left. Oh, look at freaking fantastic. Smelling so delicious. Just a little chop over there. Uh, now, uh, typically I would use uh, the Cato uh, traditional Mexican cheese in this, but I didn't have it. It weren't a quarantine. I'm not going out to get it if I don't need it. This uh, Jack and Cheddar is going to be just fine. All right. Oh my goodness. I really hope you guys can uh, see that. Looks absolutely fantastic. You've got this beautiful dark broth, almost like an olive uh, color. Just smells fantastic. The cilantro, the sour cream I got right off top, a little bit of bread onion, but it's the richness of the uh, braising broth that is absolutely fantastic. Let me grab a little bit of pork. Just tender enough to fall apart in your mouth, but you can actually cut into it and get an actual piece. That's pretty important. Um, we're not looking for completely fall off the uh, bone stuff here. All right, so here we've got my Xena. I also brought my Savion Blanc out because it might be fantastic with it as well. This is a little more fruity than my Savion Blanc, some more summery flavors. Oh, well that's pretty nice on its own. Let's see how it is with the food. All right, here we go. Oh, a little bit of cauliflower. Oh, and for those of you that are afraid of cauliflower, do not worry. Most people would have put potatoes in here, but by time the cauliflower gets uh, nice and soft, it feels like a potato and you won't even know it. Oh, that's nice. That actually worked really well. All right, but here's the piece of resistance. Here's where you can have a uh, dish that white wine and red wine goes with it. All right, let's see if the new 17 Zen goes with it. My 16 Zen went fantastically. All right, brighter, fruitier, more acidic, a little more fruit forward. The Zinfandel, a little richer, some nice bright cherries, uh, some, oh gosh darn it, some stewed cherries are running around in there as well. I really think when you're uh, choosing a wine for this, you don't want something with an incredible amount of structure or intense um, uh, tannins from the oak. You need something a little more rich and fruity. All right, let's see how that goes. A little bit of the pork, a little cheese. That's what I love about this dish. It absolutely can go with a white wine and it can go with a red wine. And just to make sure it goes okay with a, with a white wine, I know this is, this is terrible, I'm sorry. But I do wanna try it with my Savion Blanc really quick to see if it's better than the Exena. A little more nice citrus, some nice tree fruit, but not quite as luscious as the Exena. But more noticeable acid. Let's see if that pairs up nicely with the fat in the dish. All right, a little bit of, uh, got a little cauliflower. I have a little bit of meat in there, a little bit of juice. Oh. Wow, 
Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> Got a little cheese on there, I do apologize. All right, Savion Blanc is fantastic. Exine is fantastic. Zinfandel is stunning. All three of these wines go great. The only other wine that I think that might pair with this, but you're gonna get up into the $60 range is the, um, is the uh, Bordeaux blend of the Rocket. What I would do is if I was you, if you didn't have, even if you don't have my wine, I would just go with somebody's classic, nice, easy drinking Zin, and it's gonna go great with this. This is awesome. It's getting late. I'm ready for dinner. Uh, I think Danny is as well. So we will see you guys all uh, next week for Happy Hour with Brad. That happens at 5 o'clock on both Facebook and YouTube uh, live. And then uh, keep looking for all the rest of our recipes. But thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I know this is a little bit longer than usual. Absolutely fantastic. Totally worth it. And don't forget, when I did all the chopping and walking and butchered up that meat, I've now got three full meals. And this meal for Danny and I, I've actually, we're gonna eat it tonight. I'm gonna get it for a couple of lunches before I freeze this and save it. Um, it just, it's just, an, it's a nice meal stretcher and it's great for those nights when uh, you don't know what you want for dinner, but you've got something in the freezer ready to go. Thank you guys so much, we'll see you soon. Bye.